Welcome everybody to my movie review of Jason Bourne. I want to thank Fandango.com for the early private screening of the film and being selected to be one of the people to come and explain the film to you and its best aspects. Uh, listen. The last Suborn movie that they did in the Bourne series is uh was it born ultimatum and jeremy renner tried his best to uh not be jason Bourne, but a jason Bourne ish type of character and the thing that makes the born series so great is the connecting stories and the pieces and they kind of missed out on that with born ultimatum we didn't know enough about him or being been established to the character enough this new character to even care about like what he was doing and things of that nature so when it didn't tie into Jason Bourne or someone to like segue him in to be a new character with any type of introduction it lost some appeal now with this element here it brings you full circle with Jason Bourne with this Jason Bourne film if you had never watched a Bourne film a day in your life and just walked into Jason Bourne, you could still complete the entire movie just off this film here. And Alicia Vicario, uh, Vicara, I'm very terrible with names. Um, she did great. She just won her Oscar for the, the Danish Girl. Everything she's in, she's just, you know... L, what's that? L. Makana, the machine movie. She was excellent in that as the robot. She is the new it girl in Hollywood. But she nails this role as the um, FBI or CIA agent in this film. She had to show different ranges of emotion. But right off the bat, this place, Bourne is trying to search for something. But it was really, he gets drug in to a. Uh, a whole different situation that he knew nothing about. He's having a hard time adjusting being away from the program and everything else and trying to fit into society. He's almost doing bare knuckle fights just to keep himself from going out and actually doing missions and killing people. And it's he's having a hard life. I mean, the people that wanted to find him, people that was in his life know where to find him and how to find him if they really needed to, to find him. But other than that, that was basically it. Now, the location and the scale of the film is is what uh, it was what really made the film interesting. It had different locations. You had started off in Greece and Prague, I think, a little bit, and we saw Berlin, we saw London, and then Las Vegas. <laughs> How all three of those intertwine into one another, I'll never know, but it worked. <laughs> and the thing that made it connect was the different pieces. But I will say, when they were in Greece at the night and all those scenes, the action scenes with the motorcycle, I almost had an epileptic seizure because the shaky cam was a bit too much. It was too much... <laughs> So it was hard to follow. Chop, 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 chop. And I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down with the shaky cam. And I'm like, I hope it's not like this. I mean, they had scenes that didn't even need to have a shakiness to it. And that, that part was a detraction from it early. It got better as the movie went on and they went to like London. It got really clear. Everything was good pace. Didn't have to do the shaky cam. And even in Vegas, you know, if you want to see all these things in Vegas, we didn't have uh, a lot of shaky camness going on. Now, once uh, the film, going back to the actual plot of this movie, Jason Bourne discovers there was some secrets about his family's history that they knew but never told him. So now he's on the hunt. Once this information was brought to him, 
this sucks him back in to the program. Now he's got to go back to find out what happened. Um, if anybody wants to watch part one again, they can, but this film will fill you in completely. It's not like they're talking about things you won't know because they're going to tell you about them in this film here and actually show you clips. So you'll be informed completely. You don't even have to go fall back and watch the others. But if you just want to keep up with the born, you know, identity and <laughs> born everything, knock yourself out. You know, this is the problem I have with the second born movie. Because um, Jason Bourne, it was all that shaky cam when he had to fight in the apartment in the second born film. This born film had a lot of that shaky camness. I don't know why they have to do that. They, you can film action scenes without using the shakiness and the quick cuts of the camera. Because what that does is just makes the audience go like, my goodness, this is going too fast. And I don't like all this. Just, just give it a second. I can't even deal with it right now. But the storyline, the plot, Tommy Lee Jones as the CIA operative. That worked for me. What didn't work for me is the guy that was brought in to play. I'm terrible with names. He was brought in to be the asset. He's the guy from Ocean's 12 who played the, the bad guy in Ocean's 12. And he was in Ocean's 13 as the jackal, I guess, who keeps interfering. He plays the hitman. He plays this bad guy in every movie he plays. He always plays a smuck, and he always plays somebody who's not going to do the job. He's going gonna to be crooked. So, he plays the guy who doesn't like Jason Bourne, and Bourne did him wrong somewhere down the line, and he wants to pay Bourne back, so he wants to make sure Bourne's taken out. And that's the main guy that's trying to catch Jason Bourne and got our movie going like this. And Bourne's trying to get information. So you really don't know. You're following the movie. Because you want to figure it out as Jason Bourne does. And the action, the suspense. This is why you need somebody like Matt Damon who could play such a character who's damaged. Jeremy Renner seemed like a character who's playing a guy who's damaged that we knew nothing about. So we couldn't really follow it. Here we know everything Jason Bourne's been through. And you can see it in his eyes and his face. He looked like a guy who was completely worn out. He had no focus. He was blaming himself for everything that has happened in his life and just was going to deal with it until he just no longer lives anymore. That was just going to be it. But he ended up finding purpose in his life as the movie moves forward and you will see it. Out of four stars, I give it a three. So I... Definitely would advise you go see it. It's a good time at the movies. Good visual stunts, too, especially in Las Vegas. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they pull that off in Vegas. <laughs> but it's your boy, Carcino. Continue to subscribe, and you'll see more movie reviews. You'll see more everything. You, know? you never know what you're going to see. I'm out.